Greetings, members, one and all of the Salivation Nation. A potential record-breaking auction of hobo nickels. Let's explore! You know, for those of us who uh, appreciate the artistry on coins that we buy, maybe we don't think about how they can be manipulated literally and physically with metal carvings into nickels. But this is something that's been a pastime since the Buffalo nickel made its rounds and was kind of started in the Great Depression era. And it is fascinating indeed. We're going to take a look at the auction, but first let's review a little bit about Hobo Nickels. This is from Coin World, and uh, this is about the collectors and carvers of these particular nickels and how this happens. Hobo nickels combine numismatics, history, and the handcrafted nature of folk art. Uh, as the OHNS website states, the Indian head nickel is one of the most admired of all U.S. coins. Its design is true Americana. The years of its reign from 1913 to 1938 takes us through some of the most memorable periods in the history of the United States. The First World War, Prohibition, and the Roaring Twenties, and the Great Depression. These are times we must not forget. Each hobo nickel is unique as they were all individually hand carved using the design of either the Indian or the Buffalo as a base and altering it to another design altogether. And the Haley uh, Collection provides a broad overview, including many facets of this collecting area. So chief among the known of the classic era hobo nickel carvers was Washington Bo Hughes, who researcher Del Romanes writes that was the youngest of 10 or 11 children and the son of a freed slave. While details of Bo's life remain unclear, it seems that he was born around 1900 left home around 1915 and took on the life of a hobo himself until his disappearance in 1980. He learned carving from his mentor, fellow hobo Bertram, or Bert Wiegand, and both men signed many of their carvings. While Bo left many of his creations unsigned, he signed some with the initials GH or GWH. His works were often classified as pre or post-1957 when he crippled his hand while carving a nickel. The Haley Collection includes more than 30 carvings of, by Bo and at least 7 by Bert. Among the most beautiful in the offering is a full cameo carved Bo self-portrait signed GH52. Heritage writes, There is little debate that Bo Hughes' best work was done uh, from the early 50s until his 1957 hand injury while carving a nickel. The pinnacle of his work is a series of full cameo carvings with deeply carved field leaving a raised rim, the date and liberty removed, an impeccable carving of the subject. Most of the pieces were signed by Bo on the neck truncation above where the date was removed. His carvings of the style often use high-grade coins, this host coin from the Denver Mint uh, grades at least about uncirculated, and he offered the coin as highlighted with ice blue and gold toning. Heritage concludes that cameo carvings such as his 1952 rendition rank among the most desired of all hobo nickels, and the piece is considered superior quality among hobo nickel enthusiasts. A later bow carving showing his revised technique, which uses punches rather than fine carving, depicts the biblical uh, figure Methuselah. Uh, so you know, this is definitely, uh, that's an insight into two carvers, but there's many that happened before, and they date back to the, uh, to the Depression era. Carvers could do many things to change the profile of James Earl Fraser's Native American, including transforming the headdress to a hat, altering the profile or date, changing beard and hair details, and adding a jaunty collars and other fashion elements. Carved hobo nickel by Bo's teacher, Bert, transformed the figure to a railroad engineer, 
shortening Liberty to Burt to serve as a signature. We'll look at that here in a moment. Um, and But it is fascinating to see how these things were uh, were done at the time. And now there's more affordable carvings by modern artists working in the tradition of classic hobo nickel carvers. And the sale includes many group lots that allow collectors an instant collection. And uh, there's a group of 16 hobo nickels by modern artist Mike Pizak, also known as a hobo nickel guy, shows the artist utilizing modern techniques to provide new twists on traditional themes. So it is interesting to see. It's it's a world of collecting that I think is quite uh, unmatched. I mean, this is a unique portion. You can see some of these designs here. Uh, this is Don Haley's collection of the um, as a hobo collector. There, here we can see the the later works from Washington and Bo Hughes to change his technique. A hobo nickel named Methuselah uh, with these punches. And then we can see here what he did before. I must have taken a lot of intents to get injured while doing this. Like there's a lot of pressure, a lot of uh, technique there to make that work and make it happen. To, to be able to showcase just an amazing level of quality and detail. To be able to carve out these pieces on such a small canvas as a nickel. Which by the way is 75% copper. And it was in that day too. There's another one. This is a hobo nickel by Bert. Perhaps depicts his friend Bo. And the artist has shortened Liberty to sign his creation there. Which is pretty clever. For sure. Notice they're only on one side in this particular example here. Fascinating indeed to see. We can see the hat there. Very, very nice. And then this one takes the reverse. Has a little political message. The donkey, which is the symbol for the Democrat Party. FDR in 40, it says on it. Very interesting. All right. And then here we have the modern carver, Mike Pizak. Takes inspiration from traditional carvers. This one, he turns the uh, orientation of the bison, tr transforming it into a standing hobo. So very fascinating indeed. So this back to this Dempsey collection here. You can see other carvers here. Hobo Nichols broadly described as examples of the Indian head five cent piece with other designs carved on both sides after the Buffalo Nickel has left the U.S. Mint are a popular and specialized area with an excited collector base. Heritage will offer selections of the Chris Dempsey collection at a June 18th session of its U.S. Coins auction in Dallas. Heritage describes the offering as a simply spectacular and the consignment as one of the finest hobo nickel collections ever formed. Additional selections from the Dempsey collection uh, will highlight upcoming sales. The catalog's introduction adds the popularity of these rare and uniquely interesting nickels continues to grow by leaps and bounds anticipating that the collection will attract collectors of the genre and perhaps introduce new people to this area. Many of us in this community have seen silver versions of reproductions of these old classic designs on nickels. The collection's masterwork is what is perhaps the best known and most important example of the famed carver known as Bo. Heritage calls it nothing short of legendary among hobo nickel enthusiasts. It is carved on both sides of a 1935 dated host coin. And there it is there. Well, interesting indeed. Heritage Cataloger adds, this 1939 Carver Dicer uh, nickel is unique among all of Bo's documented nickels. It's far more ambitious than most of his other well-known works. The obverse features a Typical transformation of James Earl Fraser's Native American into a hobo with a neat beard, carved ear, reshaped nose, and a hat with a raised brim. And heritage suggests foreshadow some of Bo's later carvings with fully dressed dished fields, carefully executed portrait, replete with large areas of pushed and raised metal. And uh, again, these are talking about Bo and Bert, a very famous... Uh, you know, um, figures in the world of hobo nickels, obviously, as they're 
featured in this auction here in the Dempsey collections for sure. If we go over here and we kind of look and see some of these offerings here, we can see how they look. I'm going to look and see this here is, again, that punch technique utilized as well. The other thing than this Hebo Nickel by an unknown artist. Very interesting, fascinating. Here's another fine, cool, cartoonish looking example. Hats tend to be the one of the trademarks here and being able to transform and they you know there's a lot to work with it with nickels uh buffalo nickels because they are so unique and fill up so much of the space and of course you have the gold uh, buffalo as well imagine if somebody did a carving on one of those can you imagine that wow very very cool there's a nice piece a hat there Fascinating, and here's the reverse of that again, showcasing the dicer inside of a of a car, a railroad car. Very well done. There's a quite funny looking uh, piece there. Looks like a Asian depiction there, a cartoonish Asian depiction. <clears throat> And here is another cool looking piece. Just interesting. Here's one turned on its side. The Contemplating Man. Really, really fascinating these pieces are. So many varied designs. Look at that. A dog. Cool. Amazing artistry in this. There's somebody holding on to uh, something there. Kind of uh, leaning up against something or holding on to a stick. Intriguing, intriguing indeed. Very fascinating all the way around. We'll look at these for quite a while to see the different views of these hobos on these pieces. Absolutely amazing. Look at that one. Now that's fascinating. Uh, uh, a head on the reverse on the buffalo side. That's intriguing to see that. And there's a unique view you can see the quite the broad design work here's the elephant on the back of a hobo nickel perhaps that's a republican answer to the democrat version of it this one you may have seen 1919 uh, appears to be a soldier with a helmet there and then somebody clowning around with the design very well executed on that piece interesting Liberty, 1914, Abraham Lincoln. Interesting, okay. Now that is quite unique indeed with incused lettering there. Let's take a look at uh, the next page here, what we have. We have another uh, donkey here. A guy with a beard. A guy with a cigarette. And more interesting stuff. Wow to see this. That's a little ugly. Different. Unique. That is very well done. Very well done indeed. Open for bidding. Coming soon. So there you go. So there they are. Let me know your thoughts. The world of, um, of metallic sculpture after they leave the mint. It'd be interesting to see what other denominations this uh, artwork has been done on have you seen any other denominations or any other coins maybe a platinum maple leaf i wonder what you car could carve into that It'd be interesting i mean this is a channel that talks about metal in any way shape or form in the world of collecting usually that is the case and this is another one so let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below hope you enjoyed this video let me know I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for taking the time to watch and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.